Sailfish OS is the best mobile Linux operating system to date. Let's compare it to the Librem 5 development kit. Of course, the Librem 5 has yet to ship, so this comparison is a little bit unfair. And of course, I'll post updates once they become relevant. Let's talk about hardware. The most specced out device that runs Selfish OS is the Sony Xperia X2 Plus. This device has 6GB of RAM and an octi-core 2.2GHz Cortex-A53 processor. Compared to the Librem 5 dev kit, which has 3GB of RAM, and a quad-core 1.5 gigahertz Cortex A53 processor. And of course, PureOS is a Debian-based system, and Sailfish OS is an RPM-based distribution. One using libzip under the hood to install packages, and one using dpkg under the hood. As far as battery capacity, these two devices are more or less equal, so it'll be really interesting to compare battery life once the actual Librem phone releases. Now that we have the specs out of the way, let's compare boot time. Start. There it is. With literally half the specs, the Librem 5 dev kit still booted a few seconds faster. Of course, these are Linux devices, we're going to want to see what the terminal is like to use. Peerism has recently switched to King's Cross for the terminal application, and Selfish OS has been using Fingerterm for quite a while. The biggest difference is the keyboard. Fingerterm has a built-in keyboard that's unique to just Fingerterm. It doesn't appear anywhere else on the device, and has lots of very useful terminal input. On the other hand, King's Cross uses a standard application keyboard. I'm hoping that Purism will do something like Selfish OS here and include a dedicated keyboard just for the terminal. Or perhaps a way to switch between different keyboard layouts. One useful for desktop commands and control and all that jazz, and one useful for applications I want to type a text message to my mom type thing. Here's a close-up of the application keyboard. These things are identical. One of the new added features of this keyboard is the ability to enter a slash. This enables you to use regular IRC in a terminal. Let's go ahead and compare the browsers. On simple pages, scrolling seems to work fine on both browsers. Wikipedia, no issue at all. I guess there is this weird bug in the Librem 5 browser where if you're over some elements, you can't flick around to scroll quite as well. Let's take a look at some images. That seemed to have loaded just a tad bit faster on the dev kit, but we can start seeing the scrolling choke a bit. It seems like the Librem 5 is really fast at the initial rendering of the page, but if there's too much content on the actual page, scrolling can get choppy. Video playback isn't exactly smooth on the Librem 5, but it does seem to work just fine on the Selfish OS device. Also, full screen seems to not function as well. Closing the web browser is now possible on the Librem 5, so we can take a look at how to do that on each of them. The Dialer app. <laughs> they are nearly identical. They have three basic categories. A Dialer category, History slash Recent category, and a People slash Contacts category. Let's take a look at what the Librem 5 has to uniquely offer. The phone will offer three hardware kill switches and a lockdown mode. One of the switches will control the camera and microphone, one for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and one for the cellular baseband. If you activate all three switches, it puts the phone in a lockdown mode. This disables not only the camera, microphone, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular baseband, but also disables the GPS, accelerometer, ambient light, and proximity sensors. It's also important to note that this is done on a hardware level. Power is literally cut from these devices. This leaves you with a still working phone. Well, portable Linux thingy with a screen that can't talk to anything. 
The Libra 5 can also natively run X11 and Wayland, while Selfish OS relies on a compatibility layer called Hybris. Hybris loads Android libraries and overrides some symbols from Bionic with glibc calls, making it possible for Bionic-based software such as Android-only binary blobs to be loaded on glibc-based Linux distributions. In addition to that, Hybris can also translate Android EGL calls into Wayland EGL calls, allowing Android graphic drivers, those stupid blobs, to be loaded on Wayland-based systems. That's where Selfish OS steps in. It uses this Wayland-based system to display all of its graphics. This Hybris stack has been the most popular mobile Linux platform for a long time now, and I'm very happy to see it go. <laughs> so without the need to use Hybris, we can ditch a lot of the complex, crappy stack that Selfish OS is forced to use, along with so many other mobile Linux distributions. This is a massive shift in how mobile Linux is handled allowing for much easier porting of OSs. A potentially interesting upcoming feature of the Librem 5 is this so-called no-carrier phone. Of course, the Librem 5, like any phone, will be able to use a SIM card and make normal calls and text messages. However, this is likely not the only way you can make calls on the Librem 5, combined with Librem Dial, a future part of the Librem 1 bundle. The basic idea is, you transfer your phone number to Librem Dial. The service will provide calling an SMS over a network connection. This can take a couple of forms, a Wi-Fi only phone, or a Wi-Fi plus cellular data phone. Of course, to use cellular data, you're going to go need to pick up a data only phone plan from T-Mobile or AT&T, which is actually fairly cheap, like 20 bucks a month. At 8 bucks on top of that for the Librem 1 service, and you're good to go. You can make calls anywhere that you can receive a data connection. Plus, 28 bucks a month is not bad for a phone bill. I should also mention, Purism is very good at upstreaming. What I mean by this is, the work that Purism does is less work for everyone else wanting to build a Linux phone. The Purism price tag represents a shift in the Linux phone community. If the price is too high, great, wait and pick up a Pine phone after the community has finished developing a lot of packages around mobile Linux. Or you can go ahead and buy a Librem 5 and support the mobile Linux software stack, and be one of the first to own this new kind of phone. As a side note, Frozen Bubble almost works on the dev kit. A few small changes to the UI and it would work great. Touchscreen input isn't working, and if you wanted to control it with the keyboard, the arrow keys are missing. While the physics engine seems to work flawlessly, the game is technically unplayable due to the lack of input. Kind of a cool distraction. I was also able to test my audiobook player on the Librem 5 dev kit, and of course it's working great. Playing things fast or slow. Hooray! So, is $700 worth it? Should you buy a Librem 5? Well, I think that comes down to how much you want to see mobile Linux succeed. If the Librem 5 is a success, then the Pine Phone and many other Linux devices will likely also succeed. Thanks for watching. Bye.